You and I are inclined to go and check out the destination to find out whether or not we will embark on it. The operative is not the destination. The operative is determining that that's what God tells us to do. Knowing the will of God is jolly hard to do. (laughs) You don't just roll out of bed in the morning. Very difficult. It's arduous, especially considering our feelings, things that are important to us, all the issues that we deal with. Abraham and Sarah embarked on a journey with no destination for them, but God knew. Second thing that we can consider about Abraham and Sarah is that they were promised a nation without an heir. Now that's a nice how do you do. Just wrap your mind around this because here in Genesis 12, now we've got a little bit of a disadvantage or an advantage here because we know the rest of the story, don't we? So could we just lay aside knowing the rest of the story? We've got the story. We see how it all worked out. Could we just kind of go back? God said to Abram and Sarah, you're going to be a blessing and the father of many nations. Yeah, right. Where are the people? By the way, that brings me to the third point. Abraham and Sarah, an age without realistic hope. Could we just be a little bit specific here? 75 years of age. I mean, my wife and I are not even anywhere close. But you want my wife, Karen, to break out in a total panic? Go and tell her she's going to have another baby. (laughs) I'm not even going to tell you what she would say. All right? Folks, just, do you get this? You talk about faith? Abraham and Sarah, practically speaking, biologically, physiologically, were beyond that age. And God comes, he says, I want you to get up and I want you to pack up everything and go somewhere, but I'm not going to tell you where you're going. He says, oh, by the way, secondly... You're going to be the father, the mother of many nations. Hundreds, they probably thought in terms of thousands. We know it goes into millions. We're looking at it today. But them? Well, the third reality of this challenge to their faith is their age rendered their hope totally unrealistic. No, this couldn't work. Absolutely not. And the plot even gets even more difficult because the fourth thing that I just want to throw into this when it comes to Abraham and Sarah concerns a sin that carried certain death. To boot with all of his obedience, Abraham proceeds to sin against God. And his sin carried a death sentence. So let's just lay it down. Go and read your history books. He lied. 
concocted this story about Sarah, his wife, said, no, no, you just tell everybody. And Pharaoh, who was the dictator who had the power over life or death, should have, could have, and would have executed him for this. Listen, back in those days, people were put to death for a lot less offenses than that. It carried a death sentence. His faith was being challenged at the very core of life and death. Which leads me to the fifth one, a sacrifice that ended all hope. Turn with me to chapter 22. Just read the first two verses of chapter 22. Genesis chapter 22. So now we know the story. Well, a miracle takes place because God said it. And they have a boy and his name is Isaac. Can you imagine how much they cherished this little fella? In our day and age, there was a lot of stock riding in Isaac. He was the sole heir, the only son. And Abraham now is dealing with the promises of God. And he's seeing these things come alive and it's real. God tests him even further. Chapter 22, after these things, God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, here I am. And God said, take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains which I will tell you. And when he does that, God proves himself and says, no, 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 not even your own son can take the place of the faith that you must have in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the one you have to trust. He's the sacrifice. You've got to place all your faith and trust in him. So what is about the test of faith? Let's, let's just extrapolate this together. A couple of things to think about here today. First of all, the test of faith evidently does not depend on the outcome. The test of faith does not depend on the outcome. We don't do what we do based on what we believe it's going to produce when God says it. And we are a community of faith. These things are slipping in our world, folks. The greatest challenge today to walk by faith and not by sight. Test of faith does not depend on the outcome, evidently. Otherwise, God said to him, Go and sacrifice your son. Well, what is the outcome? God knows the outcome. I try and figure it out, I'm going to be disobedient. God says, get up and go. He knows the outcome because he will fulfill the very desire of my heart. God's got you. He loves you. He loves you very much. He wants the very best for your life and for my life. It's going to take care of you. It's going to honor you. But it begins with your absolute honor of him. The test of faith, number two, does not detract from the joy of simple trust. 
simply trusting Him sounds rather contradictory, if you would ask me, but the simple faith and trust that we have in the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ brings such joy to our hearts. Faith does not depend on the outcome, and faith does not detract from the joy of simple trust. Third, here's a good one, faith does not diminish with age. Who, who, Christian fellow faith believer here, who sitting here right now, you've reached a certain age and you've stopped faithing. You've laid it down, man. You said, that's it. I've lived as a man, as a woman of faith, but now I've retired. It's over. I don't do it anymore. I don't serve. I don't get involved. Evidently, Abraham and Sarah got a good dose of older age faith, don't you think? When does faith stop? When does God say the requirement to trust him stops? Never. Not until we're in heaven together. <laughs> faith doesn't diminish with age. How many times you get to a certain age and you pull back? You might change direction or you might do something this or something that. Don't stop being a person of faith. You need faith in a nursing home as much as you do throughout the fabric of your life. Number four, faith does not dissolve the command to obey. What does faith demand? Obedience. The singular job of the church of faith is to know the will of God and to do it. Number five, the test of faith does not dismiss the consequences of sin. Sin has consequences. Just because you're a person of faith doesn't mean to say that you don't have to deal with the consequences of actions that discredit who God is and his righteousness. God's word tells us that because Abraham lived and operated, walked, tried, did his level best all the time to please God, to do what God was telling him to do without interfering in that. God counted, attributed, conferred upon him his righteousness. And, and, and in a rough interpretation of that, God just blessed him with the splendor of God's presence and glory because he was a man of faith. You want to be counted for righteousness? You want to be conferred? You want to be infiltrated with the presence of God? You want to spend a life of, of just blessing? You want to just bless other people? You, you want to leave a real legacy of your life, be a person of faith. Now we can leave legacies, we can leave trophies and money and motor cars and homes and, and all these kinds of things and all of these things are wonderful. Do you want to, the most powerful legacy you will ever leave 
is as a person of, of faith. Your children and your children's children will rise up and call you blessed. You will be the blessing of many nations. Number six, and I'll, I'll close with this one. The test of faith does not divulge the mystery of God. The test of faith does not divulge, does not necessarily give away the mystery of God. Folks, listen to this. You and I can be the most astute, deep, loving <laughs> Christian men and women in the world. Let's never get to the point where we believe we've got a corner on God. Because if we did, we wouldn't have to trust Him. You and I will never quite work God out. I don't understand everything about the Lord Jesus. I've done my share of, of study and, and preaching and teaching and traveling and trying to. It seems to me, you know, we say this all the time, the more I study the Word of God, the more I realize I don't know about the Word of God, Right? The deeper you go, the more, the, you know, you realize how much deeper you have to go. It's just a never-ending hole. It just keeps going into the grace of God. And God speaks to us. He wants us to know Him. I don't, I don't know, my, my precious friends, can I say this to you? I can hardly explain me. Can you really explain you? Do we need to? I don't, I don't, I cannot fully understand why God has brought me this or done this for me. I don't understand how the Lord brought such a beautiful lady as my wife to me. I don't understand that, but he did. I don't, I don't understand that God would give me precious friends like you. I don't understand why God would allow me the privilege of, of sharing the word of God, or teaching people, or loving. I don't understand that. I, I can't give you all the explanations, but I know that he has. I don't know why God would love you like he does. I don't know why, maybe not even knowing anything about your life, you sitting there saying, I, you know, there's no way God would love me anymore after what I've done. Well, I, I agree with you. Why? But he does. Some of you are sitting here today and you, you may be saying, you know, if, <laughs> after what I've done, the road I've traveled, the sin I have committed grievously. You'd say to me, give me an, I, I don't know that I can explain, but I do know this, that God loves you and he sent Jesus to die on a cross for you. And I'm telling you because the Bible, I'm taking God at his word, folks. When you confess your sin to Jesus Christ, he is faithful and just to forgive you for that sin and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. That's a faith thing. I accept that. I believe that. Hello, my friends. Thank you for watching the Encouraging Word on YouTube. If you were blessed by this message, would you like it, comment, and perhaps would you subscribe and get connected with us? In fact, if you want to discover more about The Encouraging Word, visit our website at tewonline.org. God bless you today.